Today we want to tell you everything we experienced uh, going to the We Who Wrestle With God tour with Jordan Peterson. Okay, he's a genius mastermind of psychology. <laughs> he is my hero. He's your hero? After wow. Jesus. After Jesus. Ay, after Jesus. Okay, after Jesus. First Jesus. Yes, Jesus first. Um, and we're going to tell you what, what we think he believes. Okay, is he a follower of Christ or not? Well, we're going to tell you kind of like our take on it. What else are we going to talk about, Millie? The event, we're going to talk about his daughter, Mikhaila Peterson. And basically her testimony, because she mm -hmm. came on stage. We're going to show you a few pictures of the event. And basically at the end of the event, Millie, and we have it on video. It's a really short video because we weren't allowed to film during the event. So it's a really short video. But basically, Jordan Peterson receives a standing ovation because of his declaration of what faith is. Mm. Right? Okay, so we've been following Jordan Peterson for a while, but um, let us kick it off, Millie. I'm going to show you a picture of the event, all right? So <laughs> it was at the YouTube, YouTube Theater here in Los Angeles. 5,500 people showed up to this event, Millie. And not only that, but... They book in another day, right? They had they two opened. nights. Yeah, they had to open another night because it was so amazing, so intense. Uh, and he's doing a tour, right? That those We Who Wrestle With God tour, that's his book that he's coming up with. And he basically had a little bit of a Q&A at the end of the session. He only got to answer two questions <laughs> from the audience. But I think... Overall, Millie, people have this question about Jordan Peterson because he's been a figure that's been super popular on the internet mm -hmm. uh, for a while now. And it's like, what does he believe in? Like, is he a Christian? Is he, is he still like an atheist? Or uh, what's the other one? Agnostic. Mm -hmm. The people that kind of like, okay, maybe there's a God, but I don't care. And if he cares about me, I don't care <laughs> type of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do you feel about the event, Millie? A Just lot let's, of his let's followers, start. A lot of his yeah. followers, they're Jewish. The, true. Jewish people. Yes. Yeah. So how do you feel about the event, Millie? Because I know when we got uh, out from the show, you were a little bit, I think a little bit disappointed, if we're honest. Yeah, but more than that, Beto, I think I was fighting and wrestling with God. And I told you that uh -huh. before we went. Yes. Was not a great day for me. I have my own. Your own demons. You know, fighting with. And um, I think it was more about me. Mm -hmm. the, the way I was feeling not that great. Mm -hmm. But what I really loved was to see so many people. Waking up. Super dress up. Oh, just looking you know, fancy. Like, they look like yeah. intelligent, prepared uh -huh people oh yeah you know yeah. like when you go to a concert you see all kind of people mm -hmm. here was like more you know elegant well dressed actually his daughter mentioned that oh yes like oh wow yes. what a surprise look at all these people like uh -huh. were, and she were, was she was looking amazing too by the way right because she came on stage and she gave like a foreword before Jordan Peterson came out. And she was like thankful, super grateful for basically all the support for the Peterson family. Mm -hmm. And they showed a few videos to me, like teasing up what's coming up. The Jordan Peterson or the Peterson University. That, that's pretty cool. I think that's a topic for another maybe episode. Mm. Um, and then a few other things coming up. But yeah, okay, let's continue. So she comes out super nicely dressed and she says that the audience looks great too mm -hmm. what else mm -hmm. i i noticed that too mm -hmm. and was super i i hear her before you know the what they have it's beautiful because they do they 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 do work together mm -hmm. and they interviewed michaela and her dad uh -huh, they always working in this podcast together so i kind of know her a little bit Mm -hmm. But she really surprised me by saying, like, so open, like, guess what? Just two months ago, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. I am safe now, and this happened two months ago. 
And like, oh my gosh, I thought she was a Christian because her oh. father, you know, introduced Jesus to her since she was little. I think he introduced more the Bible than Jesus to her since she was little. Okay. Right? Okay. Just to make it fair, I would say. Like yeah. Jesus, Jordan Peterson, like has always kind of like taught the yeah. values of and the Bible. And she values. mentioned that God is changing me. Mm -hmm. I am becoming more humble because, oh, yeah. you know, my father have this and I have, um, thanks to his father, now she's another level. Mm -hmm. You know, she see like, I'm going to transform the, uh, because she have a struggle a lot with sickness. Mm -hmm. so, like, I'm going to change the whole industry and I'm going to do this and, da, 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 da. and she start elevating herself to a level where I have power or I want all the power so I can change things. Mm -hmm. And she had this realization that, oh my gosh, I'm nobody and God could use me, but and that's beautiful, Beto, because that's the power that gives you, that Jesus gives us. It's more in a humble place that I'm mm. here to serve you. No, yes. I'm here to change things because mm -hmm. we are not the ones who change people. It's yeah. God who does that. Yes. Uh, she was wonderful, Millie, Michaela Peterson. So she came on stage and she said what you said, you know, that um, I'm saved. Mm -hmm. But then she asked this question to the audience. And this place was packed, right? It was a YouTube theater, mm -hmm. was packed, uh, 5,500 people. And she asked, how many of you are Christians? And then mm -hmm. how many people you think rose, like lift their hands? Oh, we were like a, a lot. A pretty good bunch, yes, right? And then lot. she's like, how many of you are Jewish? And then how many of you are like agnostic? And how many of you are atheist? It's like A lot well, of atheists. Right. And then she said, well, maybe you're not a great atheist if you're at a, a, at a tour called We Who Wrestle With God right? Maybe more agnostic. But anyways, mm -hmm. I think it was just pretty uh, cool that she was acknowledging uh, maybe people from different belief backgrounds, mm -hmm. right? In a sense, it's that was kind of new to me, Millie, because I, I think I'm more used to like going to like full on Christian events. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, I think people that come to these events are, are kind of like curious, right? Like, oh, Jordan Peterson makes a lot of sense. I want to get to know him more. And if you're Jewish, maybe he speaks a lot about like Old Testament stuff that the Jewish community can relate to a lot, right? Like Jacob, basically that's where the idea comes from. Like we who wrestle with God because Jacob wrestled the angel, mm. which some people say it was maybe like a Christ-like figure. Mm. But anyways, that's kind of like a topic for another uh, day, but... What I love, Millie, is that first, you know, daughter comes on stage. She acknowledges something's happening basically in her family's life. Mm. Um, you know, basically God is doing work in them. And I think for Jordan Peterson to realize that, that he's doing a tour now where the first thing you see, I mean, first we saw a musician on stage, but then his daughter, like being so open, there's something to that, Millie. I feel like maybe Jordan Peterson is realizing, wow, the platform I have and people... What, what a responsibility. A responsibility. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're wrestling, the world is mm -hmm. wrestling with this question. Is mm -hmm. there a God? And yeah. does that God love me? And the, can I get to know that God? You know, mm -hmm. is that God? Because I think that's that's the fence that agnostic people are on. Like, well, maybe there might be a God, but I don't care. Or he, mm -hmm. doesn't, he doesn't have time for me, right? But I think Jordan Peterson is inviting people to the question, well, can we wrestle with with God? If there is a God, can we wrestle with him mm -hmm. and why? You know, so I'm going to tell you a few points that he went over in his speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I, I think are super, basically they, they're, they're going to showcase to us what he really believes in, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end, people got a standing ovation for basically this whole, <laughs> it's not... He's not rambling because he's so eloquent and you no, know, basically people are there because of how eloquent he is when he speaks and there's no word that he announces. Well, he repeats. That, that, yeah, that he repeats that doesn't come from like, he thinks about what he really wants to say so that he gives uh, one sentence that's clear and that makes sense and that it's actually contextualized with where he started and where he's going. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, the man is brilliant and I think that's why people were there. So, okay. It starts with Michaela coming on stage. And then one of the very first things he says, as he starts like developing his message is thought is secularized prayer. 
thought, like the idea that we can think, he's like, it's actually secularized prayer. What do you think of that, Mili? Because I, I thought, I mean, to begin his talk with something like that is so epic. Because I think we're used as Christians, we're used to like, oh yeah, we pray and we pray to God and it's a form of communication. Mm -hmm. But to say that, that thought, it's, it's basically like talking with God in a sense but a secularized version of that, right? So it's not the, the Christian way, but at the same time, is when we're praying, it's, it's basically you know, some people that could see it from the outside. It's like, why are you guys praying too? Like you, you guys are just talking uh, to the so air. In that way, I feel like I'm praying all the time. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Since I wake up, you know, yes. like what is today? What I need to do? How God is going to work in my life today? What I need to change today? Mm -hmm. What I can do for the for others? How I can surprise them? How I can serve them better? And it's mm -hmm. a constant um, talking with God. Yes. So I feel like constantly I'm praying to Him. Yes. So good. Okay. So then He says, "Well, you think about things, but then where does that thought come from?" Okay, mm -hmm. so he talks about the idea of revelation. That okay. thought, he's he's basically saying that thought didn't, you didn't create it. You're not, I mean, you're, we're smart people, we're humans. We're creative too. But it's like that thought comes from somewhere else. And he mm -hmm. even like develops like this whole entire um, idea about <laughs> kind of like a really long introduction about the idea of um, the conscience, mm -hmm. right? So the conscience is, he's basically saying that it's, it's autonomous from almost like our own thinking, our own reasoning. It's like conscience is, it comes from, basically he's saying it comes from God, right? Like that's the essence of, of where thoughts come from, from your conscience. And he's saying that's the revelation. That's the first thing that comes to you. But then what do you do with that revelation? So a thought comes into your mind that mm -hmm. doesn't come from you, mm -hmm. right? It comes from the conscience. You hear that. So he's saying, okay, now we go into uh, testing the spirit, right? And this is totally like a biblical idea where, you know, in the New Testament, I think it's Paul who's saying, well, test the spirits where they come from. Basically, you see the thought that comes from God. And then later on, he develops on what a thought coming from God would be, or it's a thought that comes from the evil one. And I think that's, that's basically the essence and the genius of the Bible, Millie, because that's Adam and Eve in the garden, right? Like there's the voice of God and then there's the voice of temptation, the voice of evil that comes. And our job is kind of like to test the spirit. Where is this thought and idea coming from? Right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then he mentions the idea of aim. It's like, okay, the thought comes, we test the spirits. We, we kind of like try to diagnose if it comes from, from good or evil. And then he talks about, the idea of sin or aim. And he says, and this is totally like a biblical concept that I've heard preachers preach on that sin is missing the mark, mm. right? That's what the word means in the Greek or whatever He's missing the mark. Uh, so what is that thought aiming to, right? Is it aiming towards something good or is it aiming to evil, like a, basically an evil action? And then he starts developing. I mean, this thing went on for like, what Millie? Like long an hour and a half maybe mm -hmm. of just Jordan Peterson talking and talking and talking like nonstop. And just like, also it was kind of funny, Millie, because at some point, and even his daughter mentioned it when she came later, that dad, like, this is the longest time I've seen you like closing your eyes while you give a talk. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe can bother, bother some people because it's like, if like you, me a little right? bit. Yes. Because if you go to an event this big, I feel like you want to, interact with him a little more and the eyes are it's, it's a big it's a big deal right when mm -hmm. you talk to somebody and like i look at your eyes and there's that engagement and connection mm -hmm. so i think that was missing but at the especially same time especially because people like me i'm always looking at his videos mm -hmm. right and and i love to see the gestures and because he's a strong man with his strong beliefs and ideas and, yes. and the why he the, the way he represents that is with his whole body, like uh, he gets so frustrated or happy or emotional. Mm -hmm. He cries like and you see his face. So I'm used to that. <laughs> so I'm coming to see him, to connect with him. Uh -huh. And he just close with closed eyes. And I'm thinking, oh, he's gonna gonna fail and fall, yeah. A fall or and I'm thinking maybe the light 
the lighting it's too high mm -hmm. or he's doing that just to concentrate and talk in the spirit mm -hmm. because I, can be a distraction for him where i am you know i, oh, I yeah. can imagine to be on a platform with so many people beto yes that what i'm doing here and actually yes. one of the words he used to you know to to us it's like what the hell you are doing here yeah he can <laughs> yeah, understand like said. in some point like what i'm doing there's a lot of people why, why here. you pay to come here and, and, and i can't believe it mm -hmm. the, what is happening yes that that's that's so uh something to worthy of mention Millie, because i think me I, i'm a musician right so when i go to a, like a, a concert mm -hmm. you see a band on stage and there's so much going on there's like lights and the the music itself like i like rock music and You can be looking at a guitarist or you can be looking at a drummer. But in this case, it's just one man and his mind. And no, no other thing, no Nothing spectacular, else. no... Uh, yeah, no video no projection, no, no show. show. It's just a man two chairs. and his mind. They, he even used that, you know, the two chairs. Yeah, because at the end he sat with his daughter A little too. bit. <laughs> yeah, for five like minutes. five minutes. So it's like, uh, what you like one or two chairs, questions. you know? Yeah. What a good production. Yes. Just we like a and, guy standing. And, and we talk about it like for me was like, oh look like the apostles did. Mm -hmm. Now he used a titters like YouTube titter was amazing. Beautiful, nice, comfortable, good weather. Inside. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so the man's alone with his thoughts. Uh he knows that. He knows he knows the audience is there to to kind of like see him I would say he's philosophizing in real time, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like a Socrates and you're, you're watching him like think about God and like all the knowledge that he previously has from, from the Bible and scripture and like all these things. So he mentions a lot of things that maybe for, for people that are not familiar with Christianity or, or, or Judeo-Christian values like the Bible and Old Testament and things like that, it could be super foreign for people, right? Like mm. listening about, you know, Jacob or Jonah or Abraham and all these figures that for us as Christians is like, I've listened to Pretty them. Familiar. <laughs> yeah, we're super familiar, right? Um, but it makes so much sense. I think it makes so much sense that if you wrestle with God, you got to wrestle with the idea of, of basically the God of the Bible, mm. right? Or you're wrestling with some other sort of deity and... I guess you can call them Buddha or, or whatever. And I think that's a whole entire different wrestling. Like if you're going to wrestle with just G-O-D, mm. you got you to gotta wrestle with the Bible, mm. right? And I think that's what he's doing. You know, he brings the Bible. He brings, um, he was talking about faith and he brings out a prophet named Elijah, which I'm just going to kind of like let people know if, I don't know how familiar or not people are, but Elijah Is the Elisha. only prophet that's mentioned in the New Testament by Jesus, okay? Only one time, and it's in Luke. Mm -hmm. I think it's Luke chapter 4, when Jesus is in a synagogue, and he mentions two prophets, Elijah and Elisha. Um, and he mentions them because, well, whatever, that, I think that, that's a topic for another time. But I love that he brought out Elijah, and I forgot right now if it's Elijah or Elisha, because they're, they're so similar, <laughs> But basically he, 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 it's a prophet who's wrestling with God and he brings it to the idea that as humans, we think that if we're going to encounter God, we're going to encounter him in nature. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to that. You know, I think when we look at, you know, even the, the, the Psalms say that, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament and like all the beauty of, you know, the forest or the trees or The, ocean. the clouds, the ocean, like all of that shouts praises to God, right? So I think there's something to say about like nature expressing itself in awe or in reverence of a God I that had created it. three encounters with God in my life. Mm. And the three of them, uh, they're being in nature. Nice. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So I believe that. Okay. But he also says basically that why he brought Elisha is because... Elijah has this encounter with God in what he said, the still small voice. So I think what Jordan Peterson was trying to say, Millie, is that outside of nature, like you cannot experience God only by experiencing nature. Mm -hmm. So I think he's almost trying to say, you got to go deeper than that 
and you got to start listening to your own conscience, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's why he started with that. What is thought? Is Get thought is secular to listen phrase. to the Holy Spirit. But that's yes. what I love about him. He is so educated that he is coming with this beautiful message mm -hmm. that people different to us is listening. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. So it's, totally. it's, it's the beauty. That's the beauty, it. Emily. I love it. I love how you say it. Yes. Um, so yeah, he brings, he brings basically the idea that conscience, which we as Christians believe that's totally the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like the voice of God in our lives from the get go. You can see it in, in Adam and Eve. You can see it like throughout the history of, of the Bible, basically how God's speaking to people through basically their conscience. So I think Jordan Peterson is trying to say, you got to move past nature and look at your like the inside of you, the mm. inner you, the inner self, mm. and look at your thoughts, mm -hmm. at your thought life, your mm. thought process, and where do you see God in that, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's basically mm -hmm. the prophet Elijah or Elisha, which I forgot which one of the two uh, is doing. He's paying attention to the still small voice. And then he said this, um, that faith basically becomes the willingness to attain to your conscience, right? So faith then becomes, okay, if there's that voice that I hear that doesn't, I didn't create that voice, mm. okay? And we believe that's God, that's the like Holy Spirit, that's how God speaks to us through our mm -hmm. conscience mm -hmm. that tells us, tells us basically, um, man, what you're doing is wrong or, oh, keep doing what you're doing. Or maybe that fear of like, I don't know if this decision is the right one to make, mm -hmm. but there's some sort of like your conscience is trying to inform you mm -hmm. whether the, the deed or the act that you're about to do is, is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love that because I think as humans, anybody, like even the most atheist person needs to agree with us that there's gotta be right and wrong. Otherwise, I mean, you're just lost. Mm. Right. And I think that's, that's basically what the Bible says when it says that people are lost is they're not lost. Like the, they, they, no, the, they, the, they can found a street. No. Right. The figure of speech is that we're lost sheep. Mm. But what does that mean? It means that we don't know to discern right from wrong. It's blurry. It's blurry. Right. So we're like, uh, I don't know. You know, it's kind of like today in today's day and age here in California, at least where we're at, uh, there's weed dispensaries everywhere. Mm. Right. And like 40 years ago, like growing up, that would have been like, uh, our society is upside down, right? If you thought society was going to get to where we're at right now, it's like, it's upside down. We call what, what is evil good and what is good evil. And that's basically that idea. Everything is upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're, if you're lost, if you don't, are not maybe attaining to your conscience, uh, you can differentiate between those two. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Jordan Peterson was trying to say through his, or maybe meditation or talk or speech that he was giving. So faith is the willingness to attain to your conscience. And then he mentioned these two things, Emily, that you're going to love. And I'm sure going to sure you have something to say. He says, work and sacrifice are the same. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> he says everything. Yes. I'm, I'm done. I take it. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think of that, Emily? Why is work and sacrifice and i know like you love when jordan peterson uses the word because you were reading his book uh the 12 rules of life um the word responsibility you're always like ah that's my word you know responsibility and i'm not like on the opposite end really like i'm the not that i'm not trying to be responsible but like i'm an adventurous person right and adventure sometimes comes with a little bit of like lack of responsibility uh, cause you just think of like something fun and you don't think of maybe the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, there's a healthy balance with that. Right. But your word is responsibility and work and sacrifice, I think Beto, are related to that. But can, what, what Jesus did in the cross? What? He sacrificed himself. Mm. He works. He, he, he started his ministry when he was 30, mm -hmm. three years of non-stopping. Mm -hmm. working you know with the disciples and healing and mm. yes so for me that, that i know jesus and i want to be like him we need to work mm -hmm. get to work, work work not just for me for the good of people mm -hmm. for whatever you know god is doing in my life you're gonna see everything 
you know, like a beautiful tree when you put work on it and you add water and everything the tree needs, mm -hmm. it's going to have fruit. Yes. Right? And doesn't take like one day or two days. can be months, years, mm -hmm. decades for that tree to give fruit. Wow. And it's work. Yes. And people who don't want, who, who they, they want to Millie, skip Millie, that. Millie. You're, you're almost sounding like Jordan Peterson. Right now, I you're wish. Like, I wish. Work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So when you skip that, you're gonna have a miserable life mm. because gratification, Beto, is what it is about. Yes. Right. You pay now to enjoy it later, mm. or even for the benefit of 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 the community. Mm -hmm. That's that's where sacrifice comes. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love that because there, there's a passage where it you... feels good. It feels good yes. because a lot of I people, say a lot of people like me, Beto, we sacrifice ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mothers up there, they sacrifice so much, especially single mothers yes. for their kids. But yes. one day you can God bless rest, you, single mothers. You can rest knowing that God is in control and that all your work and your effort is worth it. Because it's like an investment. You invest your life and your money and your resources and your love to a good person, people, human being. Uh-huh. You know? Ahí está. That's it, my friends. I mean, no, I have a little bit more. I have a little bit more. And I have the Stand Innovation uh, video. But, okay, so work and sacrifice are the same. Mm -hmm. And then he mentions this. This is beautiful. He said... The future depends on it. The future depends on it. That's that's why the Bible is so compelling, Millie, mm. because the God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And it's so interesting because he it's not necessarily the God of Adam, right? Even though I mean, yes, Adam and Eve, and he's mentioned that, right? But but the 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 Jewish culture doesn't <laughs> look at Adam and Eve as their uh, technically as their their patriarchs right mm. no it's abraham isaac and jacob and then he mentions this uh this beautiful thing abraham was one of the very first figures in the bible that created an altar for god mm. so it's that idea Millie, that okay there's got to be a god because abraham didn't have jesus right like he didn't know jesus he's basically the first person that ever had faith right in a sense or one of the very first ones And it says that he created an altar. So it's almost like saying, I know that there's something bigger than nature. I know that mm. there's something bigger than my own life and existence. And I want to connect with that being. Mm. And he created an altar. That's what an altar is. It's a place where you come and you say, uh, you come in reverence of that being, right? For, for some of us Christians, uh, you know, we call the altar, like when you come to church, the altar is like the front of that sanctuary where uh, like in the Christian setting, like I would picture, you know, maybe the band's playing, a guy's giving a sermon. And then at the end, you know, he says, do you want to receive Jesus in your life? Right. Come to the altar. You know, there's even like, we sing songs like that. Oh, come to the altar. The father's arms are open wide. Do you want right? to come and receive? Do you want to you come, come to this you know? place, right. Mm -hmm. of, of, of reception of like humbling your spirit, mm -hmm. humbling your, even your thoughts. Mm humbling your thoughts to a higher idea and even a higher ideal. The break me, I'm your basil. Go basil. Vessel. 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 Yes. Right. And he's saying the future depends on it. So think of that, Millie, because God is so generational. That's why the, the Bible is so compelling in that sense. You know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. Abraham didn't meet uh, Jesus, Right. But Jesus was a descendant of Jacob, mm -hmm. right? Abraham didn't meet David, but David was a descendant of Jacob. So is the things that Abraham did in his lifetime that when he heard that conscience, when he heard those thoughts that were pointing him to good, he said, I'm going to attain to that mm -hmm. because it creates a better future. Wow. And I think this, this is the future that is spiritual. That's why when Jesus comes, he says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you're a religious teacher, but you must be born again. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not about just being birthed in this life from a womb, from a mother. You need to be born again in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? There's something in your, 
in your and, and that's just the beauty of of coming to God and acknowledging like, mm. wow, if there is a God, I need to acknowledge that. So it's not like you come and you're born into Christianity even, mm. right? There's nobody that can ever, <laughs> I mean, maybe they can say it, right? But that's not how God works, or at least in, in the Christian world, right? It's not like, oh, my grandma is Christian or my dad's Christian. No, you got to come to your own uh, so encounter and wrestling with authentic God. Authentic and personal. Yes, that one. So good. Okay, so the future depends on it. And then lastly, faith is a commitment to the pathway of good. So if you really listen to that conscience, it's going to point you to something good, mm. right? That's why you even have that idea of like, is what I'm doing wrong? Well, if you have that, it's because something is telling you that maybe it's, maybe you're in the wrong path, right? Like, for example, I, maybe it's just a blunt example, right? But a husband cheating on her wife, right? Wouldn't there be something in your conscience that at least at the beginning, because I think conscience can get callous, mm. right? But at the beginning, wouldn't there be something that tells you, I wonder if what I'm doing is maybe wrong, right? And that's he, He's already feeling guilty. Yes. So don't be stupid. Yes, you're feeling right. guilty and you just want to live your life like having that satisfaction with sex and feeling good about it because you deserve it, because that's what you like. Mm -hmm. But it's being stupid, Beto, yeah. because you already feel guilty. Yeah, because marriage takes work and sacrifice. Mm right <laughs> to make it work uh, and then he finally talks about like the voluntary sacrifice of abraham right so that idea that um it's a, it's voluntary right when you if you acknowledge god you, nobody's going to oblige you to believe in god which is kind of like why he would say things like you know like communism or socialism like this these ideologies that permeate through humanity that oblige people to a belief mm -hmm. but then that's why within those regimes you would see people um rebelling against that regime and saying there's something more compelling mm -hmm. and it's usually christ right like you would see that in china where you no know, the, the people who are following christ like the christians in china like they actually physically even sacrifice their bodies because it's not just the belief, because I know Jordan Peterson says, the, no, believing in God is not just about belief. And he mentioned this in his talk. He said, even Jesus said, um, not everybody that calls me Lord, Lord mm. will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Who right? are you? Right? I never met you. Before. I never met you before. Jeez. Those are Jesus's words. Scary. So it's not just about the belief. It's scary. But it's about the, are, sorry. Yes. Sorry. It's about the, the humbleness of one's heart. To recognize that first, those thoughts in our heads, that conscience comes from somebody else. And that's the mind of God. That's, you know, Christians, we would say that's the, uh, como se dice Emilia en español? In Spanish, we say the, I don't even remember it in Spanish. <laughs> it's the, uh, let me think of the word. I'm just going to do a Jordan Peterson right now. Mm. And it's the image, image of God, the image of God. In no, humanity. No, no, te salió. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's there's only one word. Jordan Peterson. There's <laughs> yes. only one Jordan. Jordan Peterson, by the way, one day we want to have you right here sitting in these chairs with us, talking about something bigger than Christianity, talking about faith, mm -hmm. talking about Jesus even. You know, one of the questions I had for him that I wanted to ask, but <laughs> they only got to ask him two questions at the end. And then he's like, I'm done. Okay. You know, he goes out of the stage. And one was really good. Uh, uh, it was about a, a Which dad. Which was yours? I'll tell you mine right now. But okay. first, I want to tell you the question that people asked, right? Because uh, I think it was very important. It was a person who said, uh, I've been an alcoholic all my life. Mm. I quit. I quit for like I, I seven think years, seven years. Right. And I'm afraid to start a family because I feel like what if I fail them again? And then Jordan Peterson basically went to a story in the Bible to say, Let's do it again. And it's the story when Joshua, they take the promised land, mm. right? So it's almost like that idea that hey, you got to be strong and courageous to start again. Have some faith. Man. Have some faith. You know? Right? <laughs> and then um, my question that I would have asked is, 
One would be, I think it would be pertaining to Jesus. It would be, did Jesus have faith? Which I, I think the answer is yes. But at the same time, you see Jesus so... The word is not concerned, but he's, he, he admires whenever people come to him and showcase their faith, mm -hmm. right? So in that sense, I, I, I think he never mentions like the own faith of Jesus, um, like having faith towards God. But I think in a sense, Jesus is the essence of faith, like his faith actualized in a human. But he never stopped talking with his father. Yeah. You know, his faith was strong. Yeah, like Jesus is the embodiment of what faith looks like Yes, on every single move you make, right? Like listening to the Father and then actually putting it to practice. Mm. But anyways, that's my question. I would just, I would love to ask him, what do you think <laughs> about that? You know, so Jordan Peterson, when you come here, we want to ask you about we Jesus. Have, we have just one question. You can talk about it for two hours. Yes, I, I actually, we I think that. I think the, yeah, he would be like, no, 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 no. I think my 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 question to him would be more like, okay, we've wrestled with God, now let's wrestle with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to wrestle with mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson and Jesus. <laughs> so stay more on that. And then finally, Millie, he got a standing ovation. So he want me to show you how that looked like. Yes. Okay, let me find it right here. Boom. Standing ovation. We who wrestle with God. There's Millie, 5,500 people, Michaela is right there. So good. So good, Millie. I think God, God is doing his work in this guy. You know, he's some sort of like, I would say he's almost like a modern uh, Paul the Apostle, right? Where not that he was persecuting Christians, but... Uh, before he was Paul, like Paul, before he was Paul was uh, Saul <laughs> and he was actually persecuting Christians. Uh, but I think that level of platform that God is given Jordan Peterson and, you know, also keep in mind that he's still a human, right? Mm -hmm. So not to put our faith in Jordan Peterson too. You know, like be careful with that because he's a human, you know, he can mm -hmm. fail and I'm sure he's failed before and he can fail in the future. So don't put your faith in him he's a carnivore so a lot of Car people will be so disappointed I be a carnivore. <laughs> ah jordan peterson we have so much in common so much i want to be <laughs> a carnivore uh but anyways brilliant mind millie super good philosopher i think god is going to use him and his platform and his daughter and his family for the sake of humanity like there's uh, He's going to impact this world so much. Like his yeah. legacy is going to be incredible. A lot and of God's... people is waking up thanks yeah. to him. Thanks to him. Yes. 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 Yeah. The work God is doing in his life. So, Mili, to end the episode, let's go to our emoji tombola. Divine. <laughs> but let me show the emojis first, okay. Mili. Divine. Let me show the emojis, okay? Okay. Let me show you the emojis. So the emojis are there. So we have from blasphemous to divine. This is in relation to his We Who Wrestle With God tour, the whole talk that he's given. And he's got a book coming up. Maybe we can get him to be on the show because of his book. I wish. But I don't just want to have him on the screen. I want to have him Sitting here personally, here. Yeah. you know, and for him to pay for his own flight to be here because yeah. we don't have and money also, to pay him. <laughs> he's flying, his hour, and his hotel, and his own food. <laughs> yes, his own food and everything. Uh, so, okay, Emily, you already said divine, but I kind of want to do the whole thing with my emoji tombola. <laughs> okay, so for Emily, is the divine emoji for Mr. Jordan Peterson. For me, the same Emily. Yes! Divine emoji. I think what God is doing in his life is nothing short of divine. We're mm -hmm. super excited for him and his new book coming up and his family because I, I think what god is doing through his daughter michaela pray for jordan peterson because that level of platform i'm sure Ooh, it's going to be under attacks. attack yeah right yeah and i just want to say this last thing beto yes also it's uh, he's been inspired me this probably past year just by listening to him but um what I want or I'm trying to say is 
that you know he struggle a lot yes he's there but he really wrestled with god and he's been in a dark dark places you know mm -hmm. sometimes we are jealous for where people famous like him you know we think everything comes easy for them but that's not the reality and it's super inspirational for me to don't keep working and don't keep talking with the truth we to need keep. to to keep trying that's all we need to work hard and tell people the truth no mm. matter what and we're gonna be attacked and it's gonna be painful and but you guess what god wins all the time and he loves for us it's so big that we need to sacrifice everything we have for the good of jesus so good Millie. so good i love it thank you so much for being here don't subscribe don't like don't anything beto don't send that bad <laughs> uh Desire Maybe. from We're your talking heart. about Jordan Peterson. It's no, 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 reverse psychology. No, no, no. Reverse you're... psychology, Mili. Reverse psychology. <laughs> I don't Today like that. Today is the perfect show to do that because we too, talked about too much nose. The most the, the the yeah, the epitome of psychology today. <laughs> Mr. Jordan Peterson. Thank you so much for being here. We have a show in Spanish that we do too, where we speak fluent Spanish. Okay, if you see here us struggling with our words, it's because our our first tongue is Espanol. And you can check us out at christianpodcast.com. Okay, we have a new website. Check it out. See you guys on the next video. Maybe you can see videos here that you can click on. And we have interviews with top scholars, etc., etc., etc. Bye-bye. Ciao. I love you, Mili. You look so hot today. Mwah. I love you, Beto. Stop saying no. <laughs> <laughs>